With original PlayStation lasers getting to be around a quarter century old, people have been looking for ways to still use original consoles, but skip using discs altogether. There's now two optical drive emulator options available for the original PlayStation, and I'd like to take a look at both of them. I just want to start out by saying, while I love using optical drive emulators, if you're just looking to play fan hacks and translations as cheap as possible, you could still find PS1 mod chips out there for just a few dollars that'll work with almost every PS1 revision. Now, you'll still have to deal with aging, finicky optical drives, and all the drawbacks of CDRs, but at least there's still a budget option out there for people. If you have some extra cash to spend though, you could use devices that allow you to boot games from SD storage, either alongside or in place of your optical disk drive. So let's take a look at both options available today and see how they work. First up is the brand new X-Station, a device about $100 that replaces the original CD-ROM drive. At the moment, it's only compatible with a few PlayStation models, but they're looking to improve compatibility. Check the sale page for more info. Also, the installation is a bit tricky, and it's recommended you have a professional install it. Voltar's got a great video out on how he performed the installation, so I recommend watching that and seeing if it's something you'd be comfortable with. The X station I'm showing here is still a beta revision, but its functionality will be pretty much the same. Format an SD card EX FAT, put all your games in their own folders on the root of the drive, and make sure multi-disc games are all in the same folder. I used games from the redump set and just extracted them right to the micro SD with no modification needed to any game. As a note, subfolders aren't supported at this time, but maybe in the future. Then just add the loader file to the micro SD card and you're all set. As you first boot the console with the XStation installed, you'll get a screen that asks you to hit the triangle to update the game list. In fact, anytime you add or remove a game from the micro SD card, you'll also need to hit the triangle at the main list. That's actually a good thing though, since it won't have to scan the card every time you power on the console, meaning it'll always load the menu fairly quickly. Then just select your game and hit X. There's a short delay from when you pressed X to when the game loads, so don't think the X station froze or anything, just hit X and give it a second or two. That's pretty much all you'd need to know for single disc games. Multi-disc games are almost as easy, you just have a few extra steps. First, like I mentioned before, you have to make sure that every game in the set is in the same folder. So each numbered disc all has to go in the same folder on the SD card. Next, when you're launching those games, you have to hit select in order to highlight each of the games in the disc set. So if it's a four disc game like the X-Files, you'd have to hit select alongside of all four and then hit X on whichever disc that you'd like to launch. Then once it's time to actually switch between the discs, all you have to do is pop the lid and then close it on the PlayStation in order to trigger the disc swap. Now this is all still in beta form and it's not quite ready for this video, but it absolutely will be ready by the time the X stations hit the public. So while I couldn't demo it here, it's 99% done and I'd pretty much guarantee that it'd be ready probably the day after this video comes out. So I wouldn't worry about that too much at all. To go back to the menu while in game, hold down the reset button for a few seconds. At the moment when you power the console on, it'll automatically load the last game you played. If you'd rather go to the menu instead, just wait till you see the PlayStation logo and hold the reset button there. Now this is all still beta functionality, and by the time the XStation arrives at its first customers, there should be some significant changes. The developer Rama is looking to implement a menu, however at the very least there'll be a config file that allows you to set options like boot to disk or boot to menu. At the moment, while the interface is a bit basic, the functionality is solid and every game I've tried worked so far. Now onto the Sio. It's compatible with pretty much every PS1 that shipped with a parallel port and back. However, even though it's external, it still requires an internal modification. That internal mod's definitely easier than the X stations. However, some motherboard revisions are trickier to install than others, so you'll have to check their website for installation instructions on each one. Setting up the SD card is pretty much the same as the X station. Format it EX fat and create a folder on the root for each game. 
You'll also need to combine multiple disk games onto a single folder. Setting things up from here gets a lot more complicated though. First, you'll need to register your SIO and create an account to get any firmware updates. Unfortunately, if you bought one used, you might not be able to register at all, meaning you can't get any firmware updates. At least their PC software is available without a login though. Next, some games will work if you just copy them to the SD card, but many require that you patch them using the software that they provide to convert the audio to a format that the SIO can understand. While game compatibility is always being improved on the SIO, it's still an issue even a few years after release. I just loaded and tested my games one at a time as I wanted to play them, but I really wish I could have just dumped a bunch of folders on a card like with other ODEs. You'll also need to run their software on all folders with multi-disc games in it, which creates a file that tells the SIO how many discs there are. Then to switch discs in-game, just eject, then reinsert the SD card from the SIO to toggle discs. My Life in Gaming did a great video about the SIO and included info on setting up your games, so please check that out for more setup information. Once you get everything ready, your console will boot into the SIO's menu, and you'll have a few choices. First, you could set the menu options to your liking. I just make sure your region is set properly, and I'd turn on Fast Boot, which skips the BIO screen for slightly shorter boot times. I also like to turn off music and any menu sounds as those kind of annoy me, but that's all personal preference. In the main menu, you could either press start on a game to fast boot it, or hit X to launch it normally, or press circle to launch a physical disc. I think this is by far the best feature of the SIO, the ability to still boot original discs as well as use the ODE. So now that we have a basic overview of both of them, let's see how they perform. I'll start by showing from the time the consoles were powered up until the time you reach the menu. Please remember that this is still the beta firmware of the X-Station, so I had to hit reset after powering on the console to get to the menu, which slowed it down a few seconds. Once again, the firmware that ships with a public release should have an option to just boot right to the menu, so you won't have to worry about that. As you can see, even with the delay, the X-Station boots about twice as fast as the SIO. As a note, I speed tested the SD cards used in each console, and they're pretty much identical in speed, and both have about the same amount of storage on them, so that shouldn't be a factor. Next, let's see how long it takes to boot a game. I'm launching the game at the same time on both consoles, and you can see that the SIO reacts instantly, while the X station starts loading, but doesn't give a notification other than you can't move around in the menu anymore. Hopefully Rama can add a notification that the button was pressed, just for peace of mind, but even if not, you get used to it pretty quick. I'm also showing the SIO's fast boot option in the middle, which is enabled by hitting start on the game instead of X. On the right is the SIO's normal boot, which also prompts you to hit X one more time after the game loads. I considered different ways to demonstrate how each of these ODEs compare to booting from a disk, but my results were all over the place due to old, unreliable lasers. And honestly, even if I had a brand new CD-ROM drive installed that's been perfectly calibrated, you're not going to see giant speed differences with optical drive emulation. And that's because you're limited by the total speed of the console. And these consoles were all designed to receive data as fast as a CD-ROM drive could deliver it. So even though you have faster stuff replacing that, you're still limited by the rest of the speed. However, where you will always notice a difference is any scenario in which the disk needs to start spinning up from being completely stopped, or whenever the laser assembly needs to move around to the right space. And that's when it's going to be a lot faster with an ODE because that's pulled instantly and you don't have to wait at all. And of course, anytime there's an old aging laser like I had to deal with while shooting this video, you always get a pretty giant speed boost because you're not sitting there waiting for your drive to go back and forth and figure out that this is a game disc or it's not a game disc. So overall, I'd say if you have a good quality PlayStation laser in yours, expect load times that are about the same, if not better with the X station. Um, and if you have an aging laser, it's gonna be a lot faster, but nothing instant. With real hardware, you're never going to get some kind of instant boot scenario, and I'm not even sure you'd be able to pull that off too much in emulation either. One last thing to mention is both ODEs will play games from all regions, and both have anti-copy protection implemented, so you'll never see screens like this when booting backups. 
Deciding which one of these ODEs is right for you should be pretty easy. Do you need to play CDs on the same console you want ODE access? That would certainly make sense if you plan on getting an upcoming PS1 digital HDMI mod and just want one console for everything, and in that case you should go with the Sio. It also has the benefit of currently being compatible with a lot more revisions of the PlayStation, although the X station should have more compatibility in the future. If you don't need to run discs on the same console as the ODE, then the X station seems to be the winner. Even in beta form, it seems a bit faster and is much easier to set up. It is a more complicated install though, so if you need to buy another PS1 and have someone install it for you, the price does start to be more expensive than a Sio. For me personally, I'll be using the X station, and anytime I need to load a PS1 disc, I'll just use my PlayStation 2. Neither are a bad choice though, so use whichever fits your needs the best. Well, that's it for this time. If you liked what you saw here, please consider signing up for any support services such as Floatplane and Patreon, because without your help, these videos, the behind the scenes research that goes into them, and the weekly podcast would never be able to happen. Also, if you'd like, check out that weekly podcast to be kept in the loop of everything going on in the retro gaming scene, available as a video and everywhere audio podcasts are found. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.